Welcome to this week's Travel Talk Show. This week we are very excited to be heading to Tahiti and the Society Islands with Windstar Cruises. Uh, this is a great uh, tour and opportunity that we have coming up for the end of next year. So we're, we're very much looking forward to presenting this and showing everybody what we have in this really beautiful area of the world. Um, of course, everybody knows the South Pacific and just a bit about who we are. So we are the Women's Travel Club. We do small group tours for women all over the world. Our small group tours are limited to 16 women per tour. So it is very, uh, a very nice small group. Feels like you're traveling with a group of friends. If you are coming as a solo traveler, which most of the women that join our groups are solo travelers, but you would like to take a um, advantage of the double occupancy rate, we will certainly match you with a roommate and you can do that. Um, so I am Marianne, I'm head of the de marketing department. I am also joined uh, from the Women's Travel Club with Irene from Operations. So Hi, Irene, Irene, generally who uh, is answering a phone or answering the chat. So if you've been in contact with us recently, you've probably gotten to know Irene a little bit. And we do have the chat open if you want to drop a note in and say hi to Irene. She's here. Uh, we also have Debbie here uh, in the background. Her camera's not on right now. Sometimes she has internet issues. It goes in and out. So she just has her camera off. But Debbie is here too from our tour department who puts together all these amazing tours for us. Uh, just a tiny bit of housekeeping. Um, you will have a menu bar. It's probably on the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can pick it up and drag it and actually move it around your screen a bit. Move it to the top or the side if you'd like. Um, but generally it starts in the bottom of your screen. And that has a few buttons that you um, might want to take note of. There's a Q&A button. The Q&A button will allow you to ask a question. Type in a question. Uh, we generally save these questions for the end. So unless it's something that really pertains to something we're talking about in that moment, we're going to uh, keep the questions and go through them all at the end. Uh, so if you think of something along the way, definitely type it in there and we'll read it out at the end of the, the show and go through those. Uh, however, the chat is open all throughout the show. If you want to drop just a comment, a little note in the chat, say hi to everybody, that's a great place to do it. And that you can either address your comments to everybody, to attendees and panelists. Um, if you want to say hi to everybody that's out there watching, that's a great place to do that. If you want to just ask a question or say a comment to the panelists, you can in the little drop down just change it to panelists or likewise you can change it from panelists to panelists and attendees for everybody. Um, also at the end, if you want, we would open your microphone for you to speak and actually come on and say hi and ask some questions. There's a little button to raise your hand. So at the end, we'll have a look. If your hand's up, we'll open up your microphone and you can have a comment or ask a question. So with all that housekeeping and introduction out of the way, um, last but not least to introduce is Andrea. She is with us from Windstar Cruises, who is going to be our host for this great adventure coming up uh, in, is it, it's just November, November of 2022. So Andrea will tell us all about the destination, all about what to expect. Uh, Andrea, I'm going to let you take it over. I'm just going to give you um, control here and then you can share your screen. Wonderful. You let me know because we're waiting. <laughs> yeah, it's happening. I still okay, there you oh, are. there I can go. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. So let me just share my screen and my sound. And let's do this from the beginning. It's a lovely accent, Andrea. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is going to be a good place to start from the beginning. So Marion, I truly want to thank you for coordinating this, setting this up. And Debbie, thank you so much for putting this fabulous group together and welcome everybody. I am going to just do a little introduction, but then I'm actually going to hide my video because I talk so much and my hands start moving and I dissolve into the background. So I'm just going to stop my personal video 
do the presentation, but then I'm going to come back and answer any questions that you may have, and I hope there are going to be many. So to start off with, I'm just going to give you an introduction and experience of what Windstock Cruises is all about, because it's not really a household name, and I hope that I'm going to excite many, many of you who are going to come and join us. So without further ado, I'm just going to stop my video, and uh, we're going to go ahead. So first of all, thank you so much. Uh, Marion, Debbie and Irene for having me here today. I'm thrilled to be working with Women's Travel Club and I do want to reassure everybody that Women's Travel Club is one of Windstar's preferred partners. So whilst you might want to go onto our website and I encourage you to do that and look at some prices and look at some different destinations besides this beautiful one that I'm going to talk to you about, I encourage you over and over again to go back to Women's Travel Club and book through them because they will have special prices, special amenities, special perks to hand on over to you because as a preferred partner, we give them these special options and special deals. So I, I'm hoping that my screen will move. There we go. Again, my name is Andrea Mendelson. I am the Regional Sales Manager for Canada and thrilled to be with you this afternoon to share with you how Windstar Cruises is 180 degrees from ordinary. And think about that, everybody. So often people say, I did a 360. Well, what does that mean? It means you start in point A and you end up straight in point A again. But going 180 degrees is gonna take you in a completely new and different direction. So what do we do at Windstar? Windstar Cruises is small ship cruising. We sometimes like to say small yacht or private yacht style cruising. Windstar small cruise ships provide a personalized approach. We're able to give you that small intimate ship experience where we're able to take you into unique little ports of call and unique places that the big ships can't go into. We get you closer to every destination and every port in order to see the world from new perspectives. I'm sure that for those of you who have been on a big cruise ship, you've had a wonderful, wonderful time. And I will never say that you're not going to have another great time if you do a big ship experience. But the small, intimate ship experience allows you to truly get into the places, as I said, the big ships can't go. And we give you a different perspective of the world. You're away from the crowds. We will give you those intimate moments. We take you to exotic cultures. We often take you to places, again, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, places that are just for travelers and not typically tourists. We provide you that true, authentic, immersive experience in the different and amazingly unique destinations that we take you to. I'm going to put on a short video. I hope it'll put into perspective everything that I want you to know. And then of course, I'm gonna come back and chat with you. So enjoy everybody. I'm Neil Broomhall, I'm the captain of Star Legend. I've been at sea for all of my life. We have six ships, three of them are sail, three of them are motor. Once you're on board, you're going to have the same Windstar experience no matter which ship you're on. The Windstar experience is this fabulous little close community, an environment where people not only enjoy their holiday, but there's a huge amount of social interaction between everybody. The significant thing with Windstar is that we get to some of the, the smaller out of the way places and those smaller out of the way places can be somewhere that's difficult to get to. The nice thing with a shallow draft vessel like this is we can take her along many of the longer rivers and canals to get her to some of those places that the big ships obviously cannot access. All of the ships feature a water sports platform. We visit some fabulous little bays. We put the anchor down, we put the water sports platform down. We have an open bridge policy, which means the passengers will come and visit me on the bridge. They will ask me all sorts of questions about where we are, what's on the chart, how does the radar work. All of these questions we're more than happy to answer. It's a very rare thing these days to be able to have access to the bridge. Windstar are quite unusual in permitting that. Here on board, of course, we're delighted that we can do it. It's a great pleasure to be able to welcome the guests onto the bridge. We have a very close relationship with our passengers. We get to know their names, we get to know what their favorite drinks are. The waiters get to know what their requirements are in the restaurant and so on. And so we are noted for having perhaps the friendliest cruise at sea. I have to say that it is the best experience that I've had at sea. 
and thoroughly enjoying it. And I hope that I'm able to pass that joy onto the passengers because it really is a wonderful experience here on Windstar. So thank you, Captain Neil, for putting that into perspective. And I truly <laughs> think that it's wet your appetites and that I'm going to just entice you a whole lot more with, it, with, with all this information that I'm going to share with you. So from that short little video, you can hopefully see that we're truly taking you in a different direction, our guests in a different direction. And what do we mean by that? Because we're small, we can go into the little bays, into the little motus, into the little atolls when we go to Tahiti. We're so excited to, again, take you off the beaten path. We take our guests to unique, captivating places. Again, places that you simply can't get to on a big ship. And if it is the same destination that a big ship goes to, invariably, these big ships are going to have to dock way out at sea and you're going to have to tender in for a long time. Whereas in many, many instances and many cases, Windstar is able to dock right in port. If you've had that river cruise experience, you know that you dock right in port. Windstar is able to do that as well. And if we're not right in port, we're just a short little ways away. So it's a short tender ride in and out to the destination. Again, in many instances and in many cases, we are one of the only ships in port. So you've got the whole destination to yourself and it makes it that true, immersive and authentic experience when you travel on Windstar Cruises. For us, it's so important about getting you to see what you set out to see in the first place. We're not the type of cruise line where we get you to a destination, you dash off the ship, you check it off your bucket list, you take a picture to prove you were there, you buy a souvenir, maybe have something to drink, and then what do you do? You stand in line to get onto the tender to get back to the ship. For us, we arrive early in the morning. We very often leave late at night. So again, you've got that whole day to soak up that authentic experience. In many instances, we do an overnight. So you get that true, as I've said before, immersive experience in the destination. And we want you to come back with memories that are gonna last a lifetime. Now we have a very robust portfolio of destinations, none of which we're gonna speak about today other than the beautiful destination of Tahiti. But I encourage you, if you're not able to go on this beautiful cruise that Debbie has put together in November of 2022, I encourage you to speak to Women in Travel and see the other destinations that you may wanna to go to because we have a full array of beautiful, beautiful places that we go to. But let's talk about Tahiti. And again, Debbie, thank you for choosing this beautiful uh, destination where we're going to go on the 10th of November, 2022. So you might be wondering, where is Tahiti? You've all heard it's so exotic, it's so unique, and it is. Windstar, in fact, has an all year round program in Tahiti, and this is so exciting for us. So it is, it's a remote paradise. It is gonna be far from us in Ontario, but once you get into your into Los Angeles and then fly into Papietti, that is gonna be the start of this incredible vacation. Tahiti is crowned by a circle of majestic uh, peaks and the island of Tahiti is the largest island in French Polynesia. So French Polynesia is a small, it really is, it, it, it's huge, but it, and it's a sprawling position of, position of France. It's in the Pacific Ocean, and it's made up of 118 volcanic and coral islands and atolls, including Tahiti. You're going to get mountainous interiors of the Tahiti Island and mystical valleys, clear streams and beautiful high waterfalls. So already I hope I'm invoking this beautiful sense of oh, this is truly an exotic, amazing destination. Now, Windstar Cruises sails both to the Society Islands and the Tuamotu Islands in Tahiti. And these different island chains have very different topographies, each providing unique experiences. So you might be wondering, you know, when people go to the Caribbean, you think, well, one Caribbean island is so, so often like the other. When you travel with Windstar to the Caribbean, you're going to notice that each island is unique. Each island is different. And for us, again, it's not just about sun and sand. We very often take our guests to UNESCO World Heritage Sites, to cultural sites. You're going to experience everything that there is to experience. And that's what we're going to provide you in the beautiful islands of Tahiti. So the Society Islands are volcanic, high islands. They're surrounded by reefs. And the Tuamotu Islands are reef islands. 
So for those of you who love nature, for those of you who love marine life, wow, this is definitely the destination for you. About 75% of Tahiti's population lives on Tahiti Island. It's called Tahiti Nui or Big Tahiti and is home to the capital Papieti, which has the airport where you're gonna fly into, it has marinas and the majority of the main facilities. And to the south is Tahiti Iti or Small Tahiti. So here is the date of this beautiful itinerary that Debbie has chosen for you. And it is the Tahiti, we call it Tahiti and the Tuamotu Islands. It is gonna be 11 days on the 10th of November on our beautiful ship, the Wind Spirit. And I'm gonna to talk to you a lot about that, but look at this picture. This picture is actually in Morea, which is pretty much a standout picture. If you've seen many adverts on Tahiti, this is pretty much the icon of what you see and look at our small, beautiful ship. When we sail out, her masts come up, well, her sails come up, and it's just a beautiful sight to see. And you can see there's no other big ships out there. So it's as if we've got this beautiful island to ourselves. These are the society islands that you see on the left-hand side of your screen. You're gonna go from Papieti, and after this itinerary, you will, of course, return to Papieti. But these are the islands that I'm going to talk about. You go to Morea, you go to Rayatea, you go to Huahin, you go to Motu Maha, which is also called Taha. You're doing Bora Bora, you've all heard of Bora Bora. And then we're going to sail off to the Tuamotu Islands, Fakarava and Rangiroa, and then back to Papieti. So it's a beautiful 11 day itinerary. You are going all that way. Why not spend not just seven days, but you're gonna have a true amazing experience here. And this is what you're going to be able to see. All these beautiful landscapes, the volcanoes, the lushness, the beautiful turquoise waters, and being able to go into these little bays and motus, as I've mentioned. <music> Tahiti. What better way to explore a nation of islands than by yacht? A Windstar yacht. Sail into small bays big ships can't reach. Explore beaches on uninhabited motus. There is nothing between you and the real Tahiti. Paddle, swim, or snorkel right from a yacht built specifically for Tahiti on a line that was voted the world's best small ship cruise line. Hop ashore to the enchanted landscape of Morea. Riotea's lush forests and black pearl farm. Play in the bathtub warm lagoons surrounding Bora Bora's exotic peaks. Let Windstar take you into these unique island paradises with overnight stays at most. Thoughtfully designed staterooms, exquisite yet relaxed dining experiences, unforgettable private events, and a crew that never stop finding ways to make you feel like you're on your own private yacht. Make this the ultimate way to experience Polynesia. Just an eight-hour flight from LAX to Papiete, or nine and a half from Sydney, Windstar is here year-round. Choose from seven, 10, or 11-day itineraries with plenty of options to extend your stay on shore. See and experience the most of Tahiti on the world's best small ship cruise line. So I hope I'm really getting those juices flowing and you're getting more and more and more excited. Look at this beautiful picture. This is our wind spirit in Papieti. And we start our journeys here, all our Tahitian journeys, and hopefully you will begin your journey here with us in Papieti. This is the city that you would fly into, but flights usually arrive early in the morning. Now, if you're going to do a, a fly-in a, a, a cruise with us, and you can certainly speak to women in travel because they're going to, they've organized an air and hotel package, you will fly in a day before the cruise starts, and then you get to stay at a hotel. So you're going to acclimatize, you're going to get to use the resort facilities at this hotel, and then you're going to board the cruise ship. 
because usually if you're just flying in, I will tell you, and you're flying in the day of the cruise, a little bit risky, the flight gets in very early in the morning. And the hotels, unless you've organized a day room the day before, they don't give you the room till about one o'clock. So even though we are close to the pier and there are some lockers where you can put your luggage in, I'm sure you'll want to speak to Marion and Debbie to make sure that you get in in good time, you're going to make the cruise in time, and you're going to be a little bit rested. So this Andrea, is yes. I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but I just want to let you know that the package we have does include the flight from LAX and the night at the Intercontinental. Oh, Tahiti wonderful. Resort. So that is so, absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Marion, for letting me not go on and on about arriving early and getting a day room. So how exciting, and that's great, because... There you go. This is why you book through a company like Women in Travel because it's all organized. So you're going to have the day to go into Papietti, to go and experience the market. It, it really is beautiful. You're going to be hopefully able to buy these beautiful wares that you see. And even though you're going to be at the beautiful resort of the Intercontinental, who wants to leave there? You've got everything that you need there. But there are some beautiful restaurants. There's these, of course, during the day, these vibrant markets. There are some museums in Papietti for those of you who want to go. Of course, if you want to start out your journey buying some pearls, there's some beautiful pearl shops and boutiques. But again, it's a very, very easy walk around to the open market and to the restaurants. And then you're going to be transferred to your ship. And once you start here in Papietti, your first experience is going to be sailing to Morea. Morea is a South Pacific island, of course, part of French Polynesia Society Islands, as I showed you by the map. And it's known for its jagged volcanic mountains. And you saw from the first picture I showed you, very, very iconic. It has beautiful sandy beaches. And it's also known as the magical island. So it has beautiful beaches. It has Tahiti's only golf course. I can't imagine anybody's going to be lugging their golf the golf equipment. Let's, let's not even think about that. But it has a beautiful lush interior and really beautiful tropical plants and fabulous fruit that you're going to see. So here again is that iconic picture and we are going to anchor in Cook's Bay. This is Cook's Bay and we call this a tender port. So we don't dock right in port. We will tender a little bit out or we'll dock a little bit out and then we will tender you in. So it's a short uh, tender right away from the pier and you will be able to go back and forth and we run these all the time. It's a beautiful iconic landscape that you see and um, it, it's not far from Papietti. So for those of you and I think I won't even mention this because I'm sure you've organized Mary and the flights into and out of so I'm not going to talk about coming to stay over and, and, and do anything else but what is there to do? Some of the highlights here in this port you can watch dolphins. There's a dolphin cruise that goes to certain portions of the island. You can get to see the beautiful lush landscape while you're looking for dol dolphins, or there might even be some whales. There's some stingray encounters, and these are really, really popular. And also, if you're adventurous enough to do some jet skis, that is something else that you can do. And again, I want to highly recommend that if there's anything, once you speak to Women's Travel Club, if you see any of the shore excursions that you would like to do, because we are a small ship, we only take 148 guests on this ship, you can imagine the shore excursions are going to be booked out well in advance. If there's something that you see, speak to, to Debbie, speak to Marion at, 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 at Women's Travel, and Book it in advance. You can cancel this 48 hours if you decide there's something else that you want to do and you will get a refund. So again, rather book so that you're not disappointed. But again, there's so, so, so many things to do or you can just go and relax on the beach. Really, and lastly, to say you, there, there's, we have our water sports platform that I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit more detail. But here, all the water sports, except for scuba diving, are complementary. So when we're not docked right in port, we open up our water sports platform. You can, you can water ski, you can kayak, you can paddleboard. But if you think, wow, I'm not that adventurous or I'm not that energetic, I just want to float around on a mattress, you can certainly do that. And what a wonderful experience to be able to do that. How nice when we do our sailaways. We hydraulically, these sails are hydraulically unfilled. So rather than standing barefoot on deck and helping us raise the sails, you are either in the hot tub, as you can see here, or guests are standing with a cocktail in their hand, and we sail away off to the next beautiful destination. What a romantic, beautiful way to do things. 
Isn't that stunning? We've got stunning, beautiful sail away music that you're going to get to hear all the time. This is the Windstar 180 degrees from ordinary experience. Look at this. Does this not look like you're diving into a swimming pool? These turquoise waters, you're going to be able to snorkel and just look, look down into the water and see these magnificent fish that you're going to see, all these different experiences. Yes, there's a stingray there, but you're going to see these lovely, colorful parrotfish. What a way to experience this destination. And then we sail away to another little beautiful island called Raiatea. This is actually the largest and most populated of the islands besides Papieti, besides Tahiti Nui. And it houses a lot of the schools for the neighboring islands. It's the original home of the Maori people since 1000 AD. Raiatea is enclosed by a single reef. And I just want you to see on the top right hand pick or rather on the top left hand picture let's start with that you're going to see an oyster with a pearl in it and below that a buckle a bucket of these beautiful tahitian pearls now i i really hope ladies if it's all going to be ladies that every one of you come back with a unique beautiful tahitian pearl you can buy it as jewelry or you can just buy the pearl and have it set of course when you come back to canada but these we we do tahitian pearl tours that you can go out you can even go and harvest your own pearl they are absolutely beautiful and what an authentic experience and here you're looking and you think oh how unique a Tahitian black pearl, but they actually come in a multitude of different shapes, including oval, round, baroque, circle, button, and there's also a variety of colors. So there's silver, there's dark green, there's charcoal, but there's also rose-colored, peacock, or rainbow. So these beautiful pearls are produced by the black-lipped oyster that I showed you a picture of previously, and they are truly considered the world's best. And where are you going to buy them? Well, you can buy them on board, but I encourage you to go into one of the, the, the shops, the reputable shops that they'll tell you about when you are in any of the islands in Papieti. We also bring local entertainment on board. So this is so nice because we bring the experience to you as well. And here you can learn how to tie pareas and make beautiful hand and hair garlands with flowers. So it's just these beautiful lays and flower crowns. It's just a wonderful experience. And then we also have a group of people who come on board and play music for you. They call the mamas and papas. So again, you're getting that true authentic experience on board as well. Then on to Saha, which is a beautiful island and it's known actually for its vanilla. So one of the best gifts if you wanna buy from the island of Tahiti gifts for your, for your guests or, or not your guests, I'm sorry, for your friends at back home who didn't have this experience, I would recommend that you buy some Tahitian vanilla. It's recognized as the best vanilla in the world by master chefs and you can find it in, in many different forms. There's beans, there's powder, there's vanilla extract, etc. But it is produced on this island. And it, again, we're going to hopefully take you out if you want to do a shore excursion to go and see some of the vanilla plantations. This is something that you can do. Or why not just do some snorkeling and drift snorkeling among the coral and the swirling cor currents here? There's some beautiful shore excursions. But what do we do here as well? On our sun destination itineraries, we always have our beach barbecue. This is complimentary. And instead of eating on the ship, we are gonna bring everything onto this beautiful island. There's deck chairs, there's umbrellas, we have our water sports platform, but what fun. You can also go and have a massage. Why not do that? And this is all private. There are just Windstar guests here. And of course, to eat, we have a beautiful, barbecue lunch. So this is a wonderful, wonderful experience. And we're going to transfer you in our zodiacs throughout the day. So if you've got a, a, a tour organized, there will still be time for you to come and enjoy this beautiful experience. Then on to Bora Bora. I'm sure many of you have heard about Bora Bora. It is the, the most iconic next to Morea. And this is surrounded by a number of tiny little islets called Motus. You heard me speak about Motus. These are small, pristine, secluded pieces of paradise, if you will, and they offer privacy, beauty, and absolute relaxing ambiance here that you can see. We are going to overnight here, so if anyone wants to choose to do one of these beautiful overnight uh, overwater bungalows, you can do that during the night that we stay over. And again, it's as if you're on your own private island. That's what we're all about. When you come into Bora Bora, you are going to be, um, you're going to get a beautiful flower lay, 
but it's not, again, just about lying in the sun. There's lots to do here. And I want to show you one of the things that you can do is do an experience where you have these glass bottom boats and you're able to see these black tipped sharks. So let me just give you this experience. <music> I think you get the idea and I'm going to say you're a lot braver than me if you're actually going to dive in with them. I can see you laughing, Mary, and I would be on the top of the, of the ship looking down, but be that, I can see you nodding too. So that's a nice experience, but I mean, you know, there's lots of different things to see. But for those of you who think, well, that's not my scene, I'd rather be in a Jeep and not do a water activity today. There are hiking experiences and Jeep experiences to go across and see the island. Now, I didn't mention to you, well, I mentioned to you, you're going to be greeted with a lay, but what do we do here in Bora Bora? Wow, this is where Windstar does what we call our destination discovery event. Another complimentary event where we invite you, our Windstar guests, to come and have this sensational evening with us. So first of all, we're going to but first of all, I want to say you're able to do whatever shore excursions you wish to do, because this is a little later on in the afternoon, early evening. And when we bring you to the, to the dock, we're going to greet you with another beautiful lay that we've got. And then you're going to enjoy the sunset. You're going to spend some time walking around. But then we invite you to this destination discovery event, which is a beautiful Tahitian feast, the typical Tahitian feast, complimentary again. And then after that, we do this, and we don't do it. There's locals that do this fantastic fire dance with fire batons and a really rhythmic dance. And it's just a sensational, again, authentic experience in Tahiti, one that you simply cannot miss, but one that we certainly give you as a, a complimentary. And then you're going to go back to the beautifully lit up ship, ship after this gorgeous, gorgeous evening. Now, again, I mentioned to you that this is the destination that we overnight. So for those of you who want to organize with women's travel to have an overnight bungalow experience, I encourage you to speak to them. Then on to Huahini, where also as you sail in, you're going to breathe in that aromatic fragrance of vanilla drying in the stalls. And we do have certain shore excursions that take you to, to see and experience all of that. It is the most rural island of all the ones that we're going to. And uh, the building that you see on the left is the city center. So you can see it's, it's kind of typically islandy, but it's clean and it's beautiful. And uh, you get to experience a whole lot of different things. On the top right-hand corner, what you see over there is a little bridge that crosses over a stream and there's fresh water eels there. Again, if that appeals to you, uh, Marion, you'll probably laugh with me again. I think we would like to do the same things. But of course, again, there's many tours that can take you to the plantations and, and experience how vanilla is produced. Very exciting. Now you're going to go on to the Tuamotu Islands. And we take you to Fakarava, which is known as the Island of Dreams. It's a protected coral atoll that serves as a natural reserve for many rare species of birds, plants and crustaceans. Now we spoke about the beautiful fish that you're going to see, but for those of you who love bird and who love plants and foliage, what a stunning experience. It, this is home, Fakarava is home to the second largest lagoon in the Tuamotu Islands and it's around nine square miles. So you as our guests can experience the beauty of nature. You, for those of you who are ready to dive and to do some dive. There's some amazing diving sites. You can snorkel, which is so easy. And we provide the snorkeling gear for you. Again, complimentary. So there's, again, the brightly colored fish ooh, and those harmless black tip sharks in the Blue Lagoon. And it actually has an ecosystem so diverse, it's actually been named a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, which is something that I mentioned to you as well. We take you to the UNESCO sites. We take you to these cultural experience, historical experiences. And then you're going to go off to Rangiroa. Now, this is absolutely beautiful. It is the largest of the Tuamotu Islands. 
it's basically an enormous and immense natural aquarium. So again, for those of you who love the marine life, it is stunning. It is home to this very large lagoon with an abundance of marine life. And if you are divers, again, we, there is a, char a charge for scuba diving because we would have to get a PADI certified diver. But if you're just going to snorkel and see these beautiful um, uh, fish on your own, of course, it's our pleasure to, to offer this to you. It's known as the Endless Lagoon. So again, snorkel or, or, or dive if you wish to amongst these beautiful parrotfish that you see here. Look at one of these divers with the fabulous octopus. These are supposed to be some of the cleverest animals in the world. But again, if this is too adventurous for you, make it easy. Get into a, a glass bottom boat and off you go. So this is our beautiful wind spirit. She takes, you heard me mention, 148 guests. She's one of our smaller ships. We have two ships like this. She has uh, four masts and these beautiful sails, which, as I said again, these are hydraulically unfilled. You don't do any work except stand with a drink in your hand or sit in the hot tub. And you can see here, she has, uh, well, you can't see, but she has four decks and a gross tonnage of only 5,736 tons. But she feels like your own private small ship. We have wide open teak decks. And it's really unusual for small ships like this. And you're going to find little hidden nooks and little places that you can go and call your own. And you might be looking in here and really trying to find the balconies and saying to Marion and Debbie, you know, you've booked me on so many cruises. You know that I like to have a balcony when I sail. Let me say to you, do not let that stop you from going on this ship. This is by design. This is how these ships are built. They have no balconies. But Windstar wants you to feel like you're on your own private yacht. If you are on board and you're not in the destinations, and most of the time you're going to be in the destination, go anywhere on the deck. Grab two deck chairs if you're traveling with somebody. If you want to have four deck chairs, make that your balcony. But don't not go on this exquisite experience because you don't have a balcony. This is a beautifully, beautifully appointed ship. You can see the reception area. And we actually have two dining experiences. So on the right-hand side is a picture of Amphora, which is our main dining room. Here, the nice thing is you don't have to make a reservation. The other important thing is there's no formal nights. Who wants to be in Tahiti when you've come off the beach and you're a little bit suntanned? And do you really want to get into either for the men I don't know if there are going to be any men, a jacket and tie. Or for us ladies, do you want to get in and zip up into a, a really sequined number? Nobody wants to do that when you're in this beautiful destination or any other of our amazing destinations. So no making reservations. Come in during meal hours. We can serve a, a table for two, a table for six, however many want to join together. No reservations. That is so nice because you can be in the port and you don't have to think, oh, I love what I'm doing, but now I have to leave. I've got to get up. I've got to tend back to the ship because I've got to eat at 6.30. That doesn't happen. We also offer 24-7 room service. So if you've had a maybe a tiring day, you've been snorkeling, you've been out in the sun and you think, I just don't feel like going to the main dining room. If you order off the Amphora menu while you're in your stateroom, we will serve you course by course as if you're sitting in the dining room. And it is 24-7 complimentary. That is absolutely great. Breakfast and lunch are served in our veranda cafe and you can either sit indoors or outdoors. What a fabulous experience, both for breakfast and lunch. And you can see that there is a buffet style. Again, we're changing the service a little bit because you won't be handling the utensils. You know, we will be serving you and, and, and bringing it to you. But for those of you who say, you know, I don't even want to serve myself, you don't have to. You can sit and order a la carte at your table. And the important thing to know is with 148 guests, we don't have to prepare hundreds of meals in advance. Everything is prepared a la minute. So you order we prepare it and we bring it to you. That is the beauty of Windstar. The other important thing is just to create amazing variety. We change the menu for breakfast and lunch daily. But at nighttime, here's another picture of our beautiful pool. Sorry, our pool and our bar area with a hot tub that you saw before. At nighttime, we convert our veranda cafe into what we call our candles restaurant, which is our specialty restaurant. 
Here we do ask that you make a reservation only because we want to ensure that everybody has a chance. The very important thing to note, there is no surcharge. We don't charge you any surcharge when you come to our specialty restaurant. We just want to make sure that everybody gets a chance. Now, I spoke to you earlier, what is the 180 degrees from ordinary experience? Well, that starts out with our dress code, our understated elegance. And during the day, you can wear what you want. At nighttime, we just ask that it's country club casual. So again, just maybe a casual pair of pants with a nice top or a skirt or a sundress. Let's be honest, you're in the islands, you're in Tahiti, you don't want to have to get dressed up. So again, bear in mind, no making a reservation in the main dining room, and again, a casual attire. Here is another picture. Why am I doing this again? This is what I wanted to show you. This is candles at night. So you can see, even though it's on the veranda, we've changed the chairs, we've changed the ambiance, and this is where you're going to get your lobster and your rack of lamb and your filet mignon. So here again, I encourage you, you can't do it in advance. Make sure that when you do get onto the ship, you make your reservation to come to the specialty restaurant. So for us, there you've got your beautiful Marea Cook's Bay in the background. For us, it's about those relaxed and unregimented days. For those of you who have had experiences on the big ships, I'm sure many of you have pulled a short straw and you think, oh, I've got to be the first one to get up early in the morning and go and save the deck chairs. Or I've got to be first in line for the tender because there's going to be hundreds of people to stand in the line. Not so with Windstar. Wake up at your leisure. Have a lovely, luxurious breakfast. Go in when you want to because we're so close to the port. You remember me saying in Marea, this is where we tender you in. So this will be one of the ports where we open the water sports platform and you're able to take advantage of all the water sports. And because of our size, because we're so small, you're not going to have to line up. You're not going to have to stand in line. You're not going to have to elbow your way through a whole lot of people because this is going to be freedom from those crowds. We want you to have that one-on-one -on -one experience with our crew, with our captain. We truly have, which is remarkable, we have the most amazing crew on board. They get to know you, they get to know your names, they get to know your preferences by day two. And you might be wondering, well, how's that possible? We have a ratio of crew to guests, one to 1.5. And whilst I know there's no such thing as a half a person, we all know that, just imagine the exemplary service when we've got one, one crew member to every one and a half guests. How nice to have them say, Marion, would you like your vodka cocktail now? Or Debbie, would you like your hot sauce? Even though you're not going to sit at the same, Marion, you're laughing again, I think I've nailed it. Even if you're, <laughs> even if you're not going to sit with the same people or you're not going to have the same server, you're not going to sit at the same table because it's not organized, you know, formal seating. How nice that people make you feel important. For everybody on Windstar, you're a VIP. You're not just a number. And that is so important. And again, as I mentioned to you, we want you to feel like you're on your own private yacht. You heard Captain Neil, and here he is again, talking about our open bridge policy. Even if you're not a sailor, why not go into the open bridge? Because of health and safety protocols, we are going to restrict it to three people on board the Wind Spirit at a time. Go and have coffee with a captain one day, or go in at nighttime if you want to see how the crew are sailing under the stars. What a great experience. There's no yellow tape or red ropes restricting you from going anywhere. You're on your own private yacht. You've heard and seen me talk about the water sports platform many, many times. Again, take advantage when we, when we, when we, we are in port to, to, to even just lie on a flotation mattress. That's a lot of fun. Now you might be wondering, I'm ready, I'm keen to go, but I wanna know about the food. Well, every presentation that Marion puts on, I'm sure every cruise line, every coach company are all gonna say, our food is the best, our food is excellent. Well, I'm also gonna say that, but I can absolutely substantiate that and I'll tell you why. We are the exclusive and long-term partners of the James Beard Foundation. James Beard is an organization, it's an American organization, but it recognizes globally top chefs, top sommeliers, top mixologists, and these amazing people come and train our crew how to create their unbelievable recipes that you're going to find 
on all our menus in both amphora and in candles. So again, the food is going to be mouthwatering and you can rest assured that you're going to have an amazing time when you come and eat with us. Now, I just, I don't want to leave here without talking about what we call our beyond ordinary care. This is because we're 180 degrees from ordinary, beyond ordinary care is are our health and safety protocols. And whilst I'm not going to read all the details here because there's too much, you can get this information from Women's Travel Club. We have worked very, very closely with the epidemiology department of the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Center. And we do require, we have a multi-layer strategy. We do require our guests prior to boarding to be fully vaccinated at least 14 days prior to departure. So that is a requirement. All our crew and guests need to be vaccinated. When it's not possible to be safely distanced, we are going to require our guests to wear masks, particularly when they're walking to and from the ship. Uh, we are going to be able to provide um, testing on board, but we don't require you to have a PCR test prior to boarding the ship. So again, uh, uh, there's lots of ways that we're going to help you. If you do need to have a PCR test, we have that available. We have increased the number of medical staff on all our ships. So even on our small ships, we've always had one medical doctor. We have now increased that to a medical doctor and two fully qualified nurses on all our six ships. We are going to be spraying with EPA registered hospital grade sanitizing solution in all the high touch points, of course, in your in your stateroom. We're going to be reducing capacity. We are going to be reducing capacity in the dining areas. We are going to be having different different times that you can eat as well. So again, everything is going to be safe. This information you can get online or you can get from Women's Travel. And then just very quickly, our shore excursions, we are going to be sanitizing after every one of our shore excursions, because we're small, we generally take very small groups with us. Here, we're gonna reduce capacity as well. So you can rest assured that you are gonna be safe. Now you might be wondering, well, I wonder if I'm the typical guest for Windstar. Let me say to you, who is the typical guest? If you want that small, intimate, authentic, immersive experience in the unique destinations that we take you to, you are the typical Windstar guest. I will say that you will not find very young families with young children because we don't confirm children under the age of eight. We're too small to offer children's meals. We're too small to have a zip line or a, ra a racing track on board our ships. We don't provide special characters for the children. So you may not, you will not find young kids with young families, but you might find a young couple that have said to their parents or their in-laws, look after the kids, look after the grandkids for a week or 10 days, we're going on Windstar. So there will be some younger demographic, but you will find for the most part, for us, it's about those of you who again, want that authentic experience in a very unpretentious, unsnobby kind of way, in understated elegance. And if you want that true, intimate small ship experience traveling with like-minded guests, Windstar is truly the ship for you. This is your experience in Tahiti. This is an experience on Windstar. This is an experience on Windstar. All these unique, amazing experiences are Windstar. And again, if you aren't gonna go on the stunning, beautiful group that Debbie has put together, there are other opportunities, no matter which ship you come with us, you are gonna get a true 180 degree from ordinary experience. We just started sailing again this month on the 19th of June. We've been waiting, we've been chomping at the bit, we've been delayed, but we are here to welcome you on board. We are starting back in Tahiti on the 15th of July this year. So by the time you come with us, it is going to be just well orchestrated and well oiled because we truly are experienced, experienced in that destination. So with that, I'm going to come back on board. I want to thank you for your time. And I truly want to thank um, you, Marion, and Debbie and Irene for having me on, on, on today. I'm going to just stop my video. And here I'm back, uh, still dissolving into the background, I think. But if you have any questions, Irene, if you have any questions, I'm available. Thank you. That was excellent. Thank you so much. I think there's going to be some competition in the Women's Travel Club for the host of the store. I see it now. <laughs> when, um, when do so, we leave? Yeah, when do we leave? Right now. I just uh, quickly wanted to, because we 
you've got a great overview. I just want to go through the, the inclusion so that everyone understands exactly what is included in this package. Um, so with our Women's Travel Club, um, the specific itinerary, it's going to include one night accommodation and that's at the Intercontinental Tahiti. It's going to include 11 nights of the luxury cruise that we just highlighted. Um, that, you know, absolutely, who would not want to do that? I don't. Um, so, of course, all your meals aboard the ship that we, we talked about. Um, it's going to include the captain's exclusive beverage package. Um, it includes your round trip airfare from Los Angeles. So, wherever you are, and we have lots of clients in both the US and Canada going on this. Uh, this particular tour, um, and all of our tours, but this tour. Um, so you just have to get yourself to LAX in Los Angeles, and then your flight into Tahiti is covered. Uh, your shipboard gratuities are included. Uh, of course, your airport and cruise transfers, and you'll have a women's travel club tour host there with you the whole time, making sure that you know everything's organized. You're on the excursions you want to get on. You're having fun. You always have a group to kind of be with when you want to. Um, of course, alone time is your time, but if you want to be with the group, the group is there for you. So we'll be having dinner together every night. But you know what? If you you and a friend have really hit it off and you want to go and, and do the specialty restaurant by yourself that night, then that's your night too. So go ahead and do that. The rest of the group wants to sit together and chat about the day. We're all there and we'll have dinner together. Um, so it's, it's very much about what you want, but we are there and you'll never be alone when you don't want to be. Um, so that is all included. And just to touch on the pricing, because I'm sure everybody's thinking like, how much could this possibly cost? This is so amazing. Um, I want to let you know that on this small ship, of course, things fill up. So we are in the category B, which is was our initial category that we started selling into. Uh, we quickly run out of um, some of our availability. So we do have a cat one category B shared spot still available. So just one, when that spot's booked into, we will be uh, moving into the category BX for availability. And uh, last I heard there's good availability for BX. So we'll be moving up into that. So if you want that one shared spot, it's going to be um, 64.11 US dollars. We do have US pricing on this because it's priced right through the cruise line. Makes a lot more sense to keep it in US than to exchange it to Canadian and lose on exchange. So to save you some money, it, we've just kept it in the US. So it's 64.11, that includes all that we mentioned, including those flights from LAX. If you want your own cabin, uh, so a single occupancy cabin, we're moving up for singles into the BX accommodations. And right now that is 10,622 US dollars. Again, including everything that we mentioned, but your own private cabin for the whole cruise. So it will definitely feel like you are in your own yacht. <laughs> um, so, and you have a lot of time to, um, like, even if you want, you're like, I really want to do that. There's a fair bit of money though. It's, it's definite value in that money, but you know, that is a fair bit of money for everybody. You have until August 1st to pay this off. So if you even want to do some payments along the way and kind of break it up, you're welcome to do that. And we can help facilitate that for you. And that's August 1st of 22. Yes, August 1st of 22. Yes. Of Long course. way along. Sorry, that's important. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and we have it while you're talking, Marianne, and just the question about the accommodation. So somebody was, you mentioned different categories, if you could perhaps elaborate on that. Well, I have to say, Mary, you've done a phenomenal job just putting it all together because I didn't know how comprehensive you made your, you know, I, I just saw just the quote for the group and I didn't know that you've organized all of this. So Irene, just to answer that, I will tell you that these categories, so when we talk about the different categories on Windstar, every single room, every single, we call them state rooms on these wind ships, every single room is an ocean view. So no matter where you are, there is no such thing as an inside cabin. Everybody will get an ocean view. 
and they start out at 188 square feet. Now, when we talk about the different categories, it's just the positioning of the cab or the stateroom on the ship. So the B category would have been on the lower deck, the BX will be on a higher deck or sometimes more towards the middle. And that's the difference with the categories. So even though they're exactly the same size and you all get an ocean view, it is the different positioning on the ship. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we have somebody asking what the uh, shared rate is on the BX category. Uh, Debbie, Debbie will have that. 67.71 US. 67.71 US. So it's going up uh, $360. Yeah, almost $400 difference. Okay, thank you. That's just answering that question. So the other was a general question about the different nationalities of people that travel on the vessel. Can you give us some idea? I can certainly, Irene. So I will tell you, we are an American company and on our other destinations, we have a lot of American guests traveling with us. Tahiti, we have quite a lot of Australian guests travel with us, of course, and a lot of Canadians. It is a very popular destination for us, for Canadians. So you're going to find a lot of Australians. Alone. Certainly, there's going to be some US guests traveling with us, and, and they are our biggest clientele. But again, you're going to find some Australians and, and, and Canadians as well. Thank you. And the, is the currency usually US, or is there... Others. Are on, there board, others on board it's us in the islands you can certainly use um a franks it's the, they, they've got their local um franks there or of course credit cards are taken everywhere so oh, okay. us dollars can be used absolutely great or, thank you a lot of us guests have us cash absolutely acceptable yes okay and just a quick look at our group that have booked so far and it looks um I mean, oh, not that I know everybody on here, but it looks about 50-50 for you. No, all American. American. Great, great. Okay. Um, and the yeah, I, oh, with all sorry. the Australians and US and Canadians, we all speak the same language, although somebody says <clears throat> that, that I speak funny because I'm originally from South Africa, but I think you all understand. I hope you all understand me and understood me today. <laughs> <laughs> We did. I did. I really like the accent. Thank you. I Thank love you. a South African accent. <laughs> Marianne, just for the sake of one of our members, um, could you just clarify the rates again, please? Just yes. So right now we have that one spot, so one shared spot, which so that's a cabin that already has somebody booked in it looking for a roommate. So that's why there's one spot um, shared, and that's 6411 US dollars. Once that's gone, we move up to the, the BX category, and that is 67. 71. Sorry? 6771. 6771 for the BX. Now, if you're thinking, you know, I want to do this, but I'd rather have that BX category, you can definitely just let us know that you would like a shared spot in a BX category and we'll just keep, you know, keep the other spot open and, and book that for you. No problem. Now, if you want a single occupancy cabin, uh, right now we're booking in the BX category only and it's 10,622 US. Thank you. So this is probably a good time to talk for the benefit of the new people that are new women that are watching about how particularly with cruises, matching takes place? So with cruises, matching takes place pretty much randomly um, because it, as you book, we have to book you into cabins. Um, the cruise lines, and this goes for our river cruises and, and pretty much all our cruises, they won't let us just book a bunch of cabins randomly and then kind of sort people out after and also because a lot of people are booking different um categories as we're mentioning there's there's different categories of ent so you might have booked into one category and, and not another um so yes it is is a fairly random match um that being said a lot of our matching is is fairly random we are a very small group so in a group of 16 by the time you take out singles and people that are 
you know, join the group as, you know, a friend or, oh, I, I met this person last time I traveled with you, we're going to room. So you take those out of the equation. There's only going to be a handful of people to match you with anyway. Um, so it's not like it's a, it's not match.com. We don't have, you know, <laughs> two pages <laughs> of <laughs> questions to, to be able to find just the right person. But that being said, keep in mind that our demographic and most of the women that travel with the women's travel club seem to be of a very similar mindset. These are women that, you know, love to travel. They're usually fairly outgoing, easygoing, friendly. Um, most of the time, our room, when you match with a roommate, you're going to make a friend. This is going to be someone, so many of our, our women that travel with us on a continuing basis have made these great, like fast friends that they've now travel with continuously. Um, we have lots of, Irene talks to a lot of them all the time. So you can say that we have lots of like couple, like two, two friends that have met on a tour and now book on tours together all the time. So it is a great way to make that new great friend. Yeah, and further to that, Marianne, how we continue to introduce people with our private network group. Yes, so, and then once you're booked into a tour, you get invited into our private network. And that network is a group um, just for that tour. So you're going to be able to chat and talk to the other women that are just booked on that tour. And you can post pictures or make comments or post your fun, funny meme and you know start to get to know the personalities of the per people you're gonna be traveling with even before you go. Um, someone asked women only, yes, absolutely. Just women only in our group, obviously. The population of the ship, there's going to be men. We can't say to one star, no men. <laughs> we can't can charter it. <laughs> yeah, I can charter it. How many people do we have in the webinar? <laughs> so, um, so um, uh, our group, our small group within the big group, is going to be just women only. Okay. So, th this is probably a question for Debbie. Um, if, if you're listening, Debbie, does it, somebody ask? Um, to explain the difference between, I think it's Paul Gauguin, is it, Cruises, and Windstar, or maybe it's not Debbie that should be answering. Well, maybe Andrea. I have no Andrea. idea. Okay, there we go, Andrea. So you're asking the difference? Yeah, somebody's asking the general question, yeah. Well, the general question is, listen, Paul Gauguin is a beautiful experience. I'm never going to say anything, you know, about... Uh, Dear us, our competition. They are an all inclusive product, but it, you know what? Marion and Debbie, the way you've put this together, it's pretty much kind of all inclusive with the beverage package and the gratuities and the airfare. Uh, it's going to be more expensive. Nobody's going to give anything for free. So their prices are a lot more expensive, but there are a lot more guests. We only have 148 guests and they have over 380 ah. guests. So, is a different experience and um, you know funnily enough I was just at a conference a virtual conference just before I came on this and I was speaking to somebody and she said well I have been to Tahiti and I want to tell you I was on Windstar and everybody on Paul Gauguin was saying oh we wish we were on Windstar not that it was bad but it's just a little it's a different experience Paul Gauguin doesn't have the beautiful sails this is that type of ship that lends itself to this kind of experience so you know they, they, I, I want to say that I have no doubt I haven't done it but Paul Gauguin, I'm sure, is a beautiful experience. As I said before, anybody doing a big ship experience, you're going to have a wonderful experience. Ours is just that 180 degrees from ordinary difference. Thank you. So uh, thank you. And I thank you. you made it clear with the larger vessel as well. So um, ID, passports, any other documents needed going from North America? Are you asking me? Well, certainly, yes. Obviously, you know, de depending on the nationality, you've got to follow all the country, um, all the all the necessary. And I mean, who better than to ask, uh, you know, well, let me say you, Irene, Debbie, and Marion, because you have all the, you don't need a visa, certainly don't need a visa. Because no, you do have to have a passport. visa would be what they were probably asking about. You don't need a visa for this. You don't need a visa, but you certainly have to have a passport. And that's just for travel out in and out of Canada. Okay, so no additional documentation at all. No. Okay. No, but, say, but you did know in what she said that you are required to have your COVID vaccines. Yes, yes. Fully vaccinated at least 14 days prior to leaving. And, and, and I am sure, 
by now do would you we don't even know if this is going to be a yearly booster vaccine or not and this is over a year away so well it is over a year away i mean look at us now we're all hopefully getting our second one here uh, both in us and canada but um you know who knows by november i i, I don't know if they're going to say yeah. it. You it, know, we like, were, we work with the CDC, we work with the countries that we're sailing into. So whatever their requirements are, we have to abide by. But at this point in time, it's just the, the, the you know, fully vaccinated, a minimum 14 days prior to getting on the ship. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So if, as that changes, and if that changes, we'll definitely update. Mm -hmm. Also a reminder on our website for each tour, when you go to the bottom of the little menu, um, there is a travel requirement guide. So if you go in there, you can see all the requirements right now for the different destinations and have a look for yourself. But again, this is what's required today. And this tour is a year and a half away. So yeah. we things could change. But as they do change, we will update you. Absolutely. But but exactly as you you said in the very beginning, Marion, because this is a small ship, you know, if you want the particular stateroom or the category that you want, now's the time because you can see bees already, there's only one left. Yeah. These are selling yeah. out and, and and people are so pent up. We've all been locked down. We all know <laughs> locked down, locked in. Everybody's been saving their money for over a year. They just want to get out there. And I'm so thrilled that you did choose an 11 day rather than just the seven day. Number one, you're going a long distance. But number two, people are booking these longer journeys because this is the way to do it. So I have to tell you, and on a small ship, our capacity is going to be diminished, you know, day by day. Yeah. Um, we did ask somebody, um, a, somebody asked a question about um, just your accessibilities. Um, if somebody has a walker or such, how is that? Can they um, well, get on and off? that you are required or guests are required to be able to get, we certainly carry guests who do have walkers, but you do have to be able to go up and down. Now it's a small little drawbridge to go up and down sometime, you know, to, to, to go on the ship and to go off the ship. Our, our tender boats are the um, safety vessels as well. So people, you know, and, and let's be honest, we're on the water. So they do move and they do rock. So if people are unable to do that, we may have to, unfortunately decline you know them joining us but if you're able to have somebody to assist you you know of course our crew will help but they can't lift people up and you know so so again it depends on the level of of accessibility and um and um you know how yeah, capacity how, how, yeah, how, yeah. how yeah. incapacitated people are we will yeah. have for safety reasons you're going to have to, even if you're choosing not to do an excursion, for safety reasons, you have to be able to get on and off the tender boats. Um, so as long as with assistance, you can kind of navigate down those couple steps or down the little ramp and then, you know, sit down and definitely you can bring a walker with you on and off. Absolutely. But something that I do want to make mention of on this ship, there are four decks. There is no lift or elevator on this ship on these smaller ships we've got two like this the wind star and the wind spirit on all our other ships we do have an elevator or a little lift but not on this one so if people cannot navigate and manipulate the stairs this could turn out to be a challenge that that's a good point can i ask uh, are the sails actually functional absolutely yes um and, and how beautiful to sail away but i will tell you irene that when there is no wind we do have engines that we put on <coughs> excuse me and off we go Okay, thank you. So, um, is, is it much like a sailboat then that you would, there'd be a certain tilt to the vessel as it's moving? Yes, you know, it's certainly, let me say, you know, people worry about that and let me just address that because, you know, people are worried about stability and do you feel that you're falling over deck the whole time? No. Number one, these are calm waters. But number two, if there is going to be a storm, because we're small, we can sail closer to the shore. I'm going to just take a sip of water. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know how uh, that feels. <laughs> come up the for air. I haven't stopped today, but uh, we can close. We can sail closer to the shore, and we can also circumnavigate if there is going to be a, a a storm, which you know there shouldn't be yeah. in these beautiful depending going in November. But but let me say that every ship, no matter whether you be mammoth ship that's the size of a village or one of our smaller ships, we're all going to move in the water. Yeah. And I will tell you that for those guests who are really, you know, prone to seasickness, I'm going to say 
if you're from Canada, take gravel with ginger because you can't buy that when you're in Tahiti <laughs> and that works fantastically. Um, I was in Alaska with some US guests and she was feeling so violently ill. And of course they don't sell that on the ship. But the minute we got into um, a port in Canada, I ran to a shopper's drug mart and I bought her some of that and that just helped tremendously. So again, let me just, without being funny here, let me say that if you are really prone to seasickness, make sure you get those uh, 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 plasters that you put at the, or those patches that you have for your ear or those bracelets, or, you know, take some anti-nausea pills with you. But this is not a case where just because we're small, people seem to think and we're not a boat or a ship or a yacht. You know, we're not bobbed up and down by the water like everybody might think. You know, there's a perception out there because we're small. We, it's not the case. You know, we move in the water, but it's not a case of tilting over and tilting over to the other side. We never have anybody come back with us again. So, thank you. Um, Marion, there is a question here. I'm not sure if you saw that. So, and I remember, Andrew, you'd spoken about there are... Um, events that you excursions that you should if you that they go quickly to book ahead of time perhaps because somebody had mentioned that they looked at the water bungalows at Bora Bora yes they're fairly expensive but I guess through perhaps through Debbie would we get some sense then for clients who are interested as to what these costs would be Yes, and it is on our website. So everybody at Women's Travel Club, you know, go onto our website. I can direct you there. I can send you the link where you can go and see just under the link of the actual sailing. It says, you know, our shore excursions and, and the prices. And there's really a big range, you know. Wow. So, so there's some, a very big offering of, of different prices. There. Great. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yes, I have to say that the overwater bungalows are not inexpensive, but one might argue, well, that's like a once in a lifetime experience. If you maybe want to forego something else and just lie on the beach, but put your money into doing that, that might be just a fabulous experience. But not essential, not essential. You've got your accommodation paid for on the ship when we overnight, you know, so you can still enjoy Bora Bora just as much with the destination discovery event. So it's not a mandatory thing. But certainly, if you're interested, let Debbie, Marianne, and you, Irene, I guess, you know, check out the prices. Thank you. Um, a question. While we're in at the Intercontinental in Tahiti, can guests pay to upgrade to an overwater bungalow? Or how does that work? So are you saying rather than stay at the Intercontinental? <clears throat> well, no, they don't they have they have overwater bungalows, don't uh, they, or don't they? Uh, Intercontinental I'm Tahiti. I'm not sure that they do, but I have to tell you, oh, given the Debbie fact that it, yes, but given the fact that it's included and it's really a spectacular resort, you know, oh, yeah. and you're there for a night, I would want to take advantage of whatever that has to offer there. I'm not sure if they have overwater bungalows at the resort. I'm not sure if they do. Oh, Debbie, Debbie stayed there on another one of our tours. I think she oh. did. Debbie. I think, she's she's, 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 I think she's probably she's probably looking up the car. <laughs> well, for the benefit of our member who is interested, we'll we'll do some legwork and perhaps find out. Um, so yeah. I, yeah. So Sharon, if you want to email us at info at women's-travel-club.com, then we can get you th that information. Yeah, the, all the prices are on here. Which port is it that the over that's an option. Bora Bora. Bora Bora. Well, it's not a, it, it's a cost to it. And that's yeah, uh, I'm just looking up. It might be here on the site. The word expensive was used. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's uh, you everything there is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why, you know, going to an expensive destination on a cruise ship is so well worth it. Your meals are taken care of. Your accommodation is taken care of. Some of your events are taken care of. What a way to do it rather than go and pay for land arrangements and then have to buy, you know, uh, different meals all the time. That can really add up and be very expensive. Right. So this is a wonderful way to do it. You know, the, the truth could be that the two ladies who are interested right now could share the bungalow cost together. There we go. Yes. Possibility. Yeah. Possibility. Can I say something? Um, Absolutely. Okay, so they were looking at Bora Bora and where we stayed pre and post, that's Papeete. So that's nowhere near Bora Bora. No, I know. I was just so they thinking. Would, they could go after. 
the cruise, like when we end, they could fly over to Bora Bora and stay there. But I also will look into if they want to send me an email, I'll look into whether or not the Intercontinental has overwater bungalows because I'm I don't remember them being there, but they could be. So okay. Okay. Just one thing I want to throw out without putting a wrench in the wheel here or whatever, but um, I think the airfare, and I, I, I'm, I'm sure it is, is Debbie, I don't know if there is a, a diversion available because I think the package that you Sorry? Can, I don't think that there is, you can divert on this um, air package. I think it's in and out the same day. I'm not sure that you can do an extension. If yeah, anybody that extension. makes sense. Too. Oh, maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe you're right. I, I, I can't remember what my um group guy said if we could do that or not so yeah i don't see the pricing on the website uh it just says call for information so right. we'll have to get the pricing for the over the excursion kind of overnight bora bora um experience yes because i yeah i don't see that um so can i ask another question that just popped up but i think we kind of touched on it before so the, the type of clientele in age groups, um, that's really the question that's being asked. We know that Women's Travel Club typically, you know, we have a mature group of women 50 plus that travel on most of our tours. Um, but this is in general, I think, being asked about the actual cruise itself. So let's be honest, this is a honeymoon destination as well. So you might find some younger couples I mean it's also as we've established it's an expensive destination so you're not going to find too many young young people you will definitely not have young families with young kids so it really ranges we do find that in this destination it tends to 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 skew a little bit to uh, younger to a more, you know a more mature uh, 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 demographic so it's not just young people or uh, more senior people it's really really I would say a mix but again you know bear in mind there might be somebody I know somebody who did Windstar and they did uh, a honeymoon but then there were some other couples who did their vow renewals so it's really really <laughs> really depends I don't want to say that don't determine the destination based on the demographic this is you know it's for everybody and invariably you're going to be mixing with your own people I hope you'll mix or guests will mix with other people but you pretty much can do your own thing and stick to your own group or of course you can mix in the general public let me say so you know I wouldn't concern myself and think well this is going to be you know way too old or way too young it's just nice to be with everybody and I can't say that you know it's specifically going to be a young gen uh, demographic I'll, I'll say to you something like northern Europe generally it's a more mature demographic and I think that the destination dictates you know what what the demographic is going to be like the caribbean might be a little bit of a younger demographic but this is beautiful and this is just you know everybody's dream so it doesn't matter your age if this is you on your bucket list and this is what you want to do don't put off because you think there might be too many young people that's a great answer thank you thank you and we did there's another question from sharon and debbie you're there you had the given Sharon a response before, but can we clarify concerns about the weather at that time? Um, it's still considered a great time of year to travel, but is rain an issue? I think perhaps you can clarify. If not, Debbie, Andrea, what can you tell us about traveling in November? Well, I went in November in 2019 and I don't think we had a spot of rain, so. Generally, November is a great time to travel to to uh, the whole area of Tahiti. Yeah, you might think like Caribbean's not great in November, but this is yeah so specific. This is whole and different I area. Know, like, I think we may have had like a couple of minutes of rain uh, or like a half hour of rain, and then it would just totally clear up. It could so, be like yeah, just a spot. But yeah. I don't remember hardly any rain at that time. We were there the whole like for twelve days in in uh, November, so. Okay. And Thank you. Tahiti's Thank you. typically kind of year-round destination. It, this yeah. is a shoulder season, so like October, November, you're getting into like kind of a shoulder season, getting into the summer, so maybe a little warmer, but still, yeah. other than that, the temperature, like, in, you're in Tahiti, it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah. more, it's going to be, what, <laughs> five degrees warmer than it was six months ago, yeah. so it's not, you know, not yeah. like Canadian temperature travels. So really November's a good time. Yeah. 
I think coming from Canada, we can never complain, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, on that note. Actually, you know, when this finishes, I can hear the dialogue now in the background. Who's going? <laughs> we know, which door? <laughs> Who's going to do it? A lot of competition. Actually, <laughs> might just be one more question. Oh, no, that's it. Great. Thank you. Anybody, no, I think you does can't. anybody um, want to come on and speak and say hello or have a question they want to actually say? So you can raise your hand. There's a little button. Raise your hand. I will stop the share. Maybe I can stop the share. I don't know if you want me to stop sharing. No, Mary. no, that's okay. Uh, uh, we can uh, say everything. Okay. okay. You're doing a fine job. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, no, no hands raised. So I think we're good. So I want to thank Jill, everybody. Jill, oh, I just, oh, Jill Ginsburg <laughs> raised her hand. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Um, can I? You might have to. You, you're uh, you me. The power. You might have to oh. allow to speak. I love having the power. Hold on a second. Um, Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I see Jill here? I think okay. if if you've opened kind of participants and just put your um, cursor over her name, it'll come up with the allow to chat button. You just click on that and then you, you can. And the problem, oh, here we go. Yes, so what do I do? Just go over her and allow to talk. There you go. Jill, you can Hi, talk Jill. now. You just have yourself muted. Hi. Okay. There you go. Hi, how are you? Very <laughs> good, how are you? I'm good. So first of all, I wanted to say thank you so very much. I found this so informative. Um, I'm from Boston and there are two destinations that they are totally on my bucket list. One is doing an African safari and the other is the South Pacific. And, you know, when I look at the magnificent waters and the fish and the sand and the sea, it really looks phenomenal. So I've never been on one of your cruises before, and I'm, you know, almost certain to sign up. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself and say hello, and be meeting, hey, you, meeting you soon. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Jill. And we very much look forward to traveling with you. Thank um, you. And you, when you're ready for that African safari, oh, yeah. I'm oh, your girl. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got lots to talk about. Lots to talk about, Jill. Oh, wonderful. And Jill, we can't wait to have you on board with us. So that's... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so, so much, Jill. Jill. Thank you. Okay. Anybody um, else wants to join us? No. I just want to also welcome, you can't see her because she doesn't have her camera on, but our newest team member has joined us. Uh, so Cassandra, Cass oh, there's Cassie. Cassie. Uh -huh. So you're just still muted, Cassie. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Cassie. So Cassie is our flight booking specialist and also um, my assistant for marketing. So she's a marketing assistant. Um, and we are very excited to have her join us. It's, it's her first week here, but I'm sure everybody will get to know her and she'll be a very important member of our team. So welcome, Cassie. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Andrea. This was an excellent presentation. I think you Asia. really, excellent. really did show off this destination that's just so beautiful and you did it justice so thank yeah. you thank you Debbie um, for all your background and insight and always there with the answers and all Irene for being manning the chat and the questions so thank great you. Thank, well, thank you for having me here today and again thanks to everybody that joined us I appreciate thank it thank you so much Andrea it was fabulous it was. Thank, you. thank you have a great day oh hold it Sorry. No, it's just a thank you very much. Oh, sorry. I'm not quick enough to get there. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Have a thank great week, so everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you.